Hi everyone and welcome to video number 16 on the American West and this one ladies and gentlemen is looking at two things one the life of a cowboy and secondly the conflict between the cowboys and cattlemen on one side and the homesteaders on the other so it'll be in two halves in our previous video we looked at the long drives involving the cowboys who was involved, why they were involved. The first part of this video, ladies and gentlemen, looks at what was actually involved on the long drive, how it actually took place, what was the life of the cowboy, what tasks did they have to do on this long drive? Well, it was a very strange mixture. There were long hours where nothing happened at all. It was a very boring, tedious life. Plodding along, mile after mile, heading towards the cow town. Now, sometimes these long drives would take two or three months, sometimes even longer, depending on the route. But interspersed with these long periods of boredom, there were moments of real challenge and real danger such as well here's a list for you number one stampedes imagine ladies and gentlemen two or three thousand of these chaps all running out of control check the length of the horns there on the long horn stampedes were hugely dangerous now they were sparked by maybe lightning particularly at night time and the only answer for the cowboys you can't say stop how would you stop a stampede, ladies and gentlemen? Any ideas? Well, what they did, they tried to turn the herd so that eventually the animals would get tired and they would turn on themselves and eventually stop. But a stampede was a dangerous time. What other problems faced the cowboys? Bad weather, rain, storms, wind. Come back to that in a minute crossing rivers, rivers that were often flooded, particularly by the storms. Cowboys had to face the dangers of attack, people stealing, thieving, outlaws taking their cattle, or also attack from the Plains Indians. And finally, the last one, sometimes they were at risk from attacks from wildlife, wolves, snakes, for example. So, as I've said, long hours of boredom, short bursts of real danger and excitement. That was the life of the cowboy on the long drive. Now these cattle drives, as I've hinted, sometimes two to three thousand. It took a team of cowboys to control them, sometimes 10, 12, 15, 20, depending on the size of the herd. These cowboys were usually single men, maybe ex-soldiers, maybe ex-slaves. It was a difficult life. What about the money? The cowboys aren't going to do it for free. No, they want the dollar, ladies and gentlemen. Well, was it worth it? In the team, obviously there's a boss, the trail boss. He made all the important decisions, the route to take, the speed to go at, when to set camp for the night, where to set camp. He's the boss. So he takes the most money, maybe a hundred dollars. Next in line is the cook, a very vital part of the long drive and the cowboy team. He would ride in what was called the chuck wagon and make all the uh, meals, not particularly uh, top, top of the range, ladies and gentlemen. I think there were a lot of beans involved, but the cook, not quite as well paid as the boss, but the cook would be on maybe $50. And then you get the rest of the team, the actual cowboys themselves. They would be on maybe $25, $30. Not particularly well paid. If I were a rich man, I wouldn't become a cowboy because they didn't really get that well paid. Remember I said they surrounded the herd at the front. There were maybe two cowboys called Riding Point along the side of the herd. 
they've got swing and flank, maybe two or three more cowboys each side. And then at the back, they've got the drag surrounding the herd totally. At the night time, they would sleep in open air. Some people would have to guard the herd. It was important to stay awake. They were tired. So what they sometimes would do is rub tobacco juice in their eyes, which would really sting, but would keep them awake. A tough life being a cowboy. Behind the drag at the back, also there was the wrangler, which is where we get the name of the jeans from, ladies and gentlemen. They looked after the spare horses in what was called the remuda. The cowboys would have to change horse maybe every three or four hours. You can't exhaust your horse. So you, they had to have a supply of fresh horses, rested horses. So that was the role of the cowboy on the long drive. Finally, the drive would end. They'd get to the end of the trail. And what would happen then? Well, they would go to cow towns like Abilene. And then what I call the three G's would kick in. Get paid, get washed, get drunk. This would often lead to trouble and violence and sometimes injuries and death in the cow towns. Law and order was a problem. So as I said, they went to the cow towns, places like Abilene and Sedalia. Hmm. I think they should have gone to New York. <laughs> sorry, first joke. I've got one more, but sorry about that. Now, let's get serious again. We've talked about the weather on the drive. What about the cowboys' clothes? How did they adapt? First of all, we know it very well. The cowboy hat, sometimes called a 10 gallon hat. Now, this was like the roof for the cowboy, a roof to a house. Why would they wear a hat like this? Any ideas? It's all to do with protection. Protect from the sun, protect from the rain, protect from the snow. So the hat was nearly always worn by the cowboys. Next, we have the bandana, often worn around the neck, but it could be pulled up, particularly during storms and bad weather. Now that's protection against rain, sleet, snow, ice, but also against dust. We get the idea, ladies and gentlemen, what they're trying to do is cut down the amounts of skin open to the elements. So the bandana would be a very important part of a cowboy's clothing. Gloves would be worn. They're holding the reins all day. Their hands, although they were tough men and tough hands, their hands would get rubbed raw. So they had to wear gloves, ladies and gentlemen. What else? The saddle. Vital if you're sitting in a, on a horse for 10, 12, 14 hours a day. The saddle. Rope for a lasso to try and capture any stray or runaway cattle. What else? Spurs, which would dig into the horse to make him go forward. Jeans, I've already mentioned. The Wrangler. The cowboys wore denim because it was a very thick, tough material. It gave protection against the weather and also the rough vegetation. It is protecting them, ladies and gentlemen. Also, over the top of their jeans, over the top of their denim, they wore something called chaps, leather chaps to give extra protection. Boots with a high heel, which would fit into the stirrup. So they gave them extra stability on the horse. And of course, something that no self-respecting cowboy would be without. The gun. For obvious reasons. Remember I said threat of attack. The gun would be worn by the cowboys. So that's the cowboy's life on the long drive. But what about the cowboy's life on the range when the long drive isn't taking place? Well, life there was slightly different. 
it was a job all year round, whereas the drive might just be three months, four months, etc. Fewer cowboys were needed. So some cowboys would travel round looking for work at other ranches, or they would head into town and look for work, for example, in the saloon bars. What jobs did they do on the range? Home, home on the range, where the deer and the antelope play. Terrible singing, I apologise. Their work was often repairing, maintaining the ranch, maintaining fences, barbed wire, etc. Checking on the cattle. Have some cattle been lost? Are some sick or ill? In winter time, maybe going out to have to break the ice so that the cattle can access water. They would have to feed the cattle. They would have to brand the cattle with the sign or symbol of the owner to prevent other people from stealing it. Sometimes they'd have to go out and live almost not far away in sort of bunkhouses near the cattle herd itself. But at least they were indoors. On the long drive, remember, they were outdoors. And then, of course, as the long drive is coming nearer, they would then round up the cattle, ready for the long drive. Round up? That leads me to my, one of my other little jokes, ladies and gentlemen. Why are cowboys rubbish at maths? I don't know. Why are cowboys rubbish at maths? Because they're always rounding up the answer. Hooray! I apologise. I think that's the last joke. You'll be pleased to hear. Now, that's the first part of the video done. The life of the cowboy. Second half, the conflict. Conflict between the cowboys and the homesteaders. What's this all about? Well, neighbours. Everybody needs good neighbours. With a little understanding. You can find the perfect blend. Oh, that's terrible. Understanding. That's the key word. Now, Neighbours was a soap opera. It's not real life. But what did happen in real life on the Great Plains? Here's the problem. One piece of land, two different groups of people wanting different things. There was no understanding. This led to conflict. Now, the first bit of conflict was in the 1850s, 1860s. The long drives. Remember, taking thousands and thousands of Texas longhorns across the homesteaders' land. But the problem was, the Texas longhorn carried a flea, and the flea had Texas fever. Now, these cattle were immune. It didn't kill them. But if the flea jumped onto the homesteaders' cattle... Uh-oh, it's going to kill the homesteaders' cattle. So they didn't want this animal bringing disease to them. Conflict. Also, thousands of cattle trampling the homesteaders' crops. So they're losing their money. They're not going to be pleased about that. And at first, the homesteaders, remember there's not enough wood on the plains. They couldn't build strong enough, big enough, long enough fences to keep the cattle out. So that's the first reason for the conflict, 1850s, 1860s. Second part of the conflict was the rivalry between the homesteaders and the cattle ranchers. Open range ranching needed huge amounts of public land. But the Homestead Act, 1862, allowed homesteaders to buy and get smaller pockets of land, 160 acres. That's no good for the ranchers. It was good for the homesteaders. This led to conflict. The ranchers used all sorts of means, lawful and illegal as well, trying to stop the homesteaders from getting land or trying to get the homesteaders off the land. What did they do? Number one, the ranchers, family members, workers, cowboys, all filed claims under the Homestead Act to try and get the little pockets of land. And then when they've got them, give land to the ranch boss, the ranch owner, so he is controlling most of the land. So the homesteaders can't get access. Number two, 
ranchers would buy land from the railway companies because they're rich, they've got the dollar. Then they built the fences blocking off homesteaders' land. So even if a homesteader was already there, the fences on the rancher's land would block off the homesteader. Conflict. Thirdly, rich, remember the money again, rich ranch owners took the poorer homesteaders to court. This was very expensive. Homesteaders couldn't really afford it and often gave up and just moved. And the fourth one, ranchers accused the homesteaders of stealing, rustling the cattle. That was a very serious crime with terrible punishments, i.e. death. So, conflict between the ranchers and the homesteaders over land, different uses of the land. Now, I've mentioned there a couple of times fences. There's a problem with fences. Yes, cattle were eating the homesteaders' crops. The ranchers said, well, the thing is, cows have got a legal right to roam. And anyway, it's the homesteaders' fault. If your fences aren't strong enough to stop our cattle, tough. That's what the ranchers said. On the other side of the fence, on the other side of the argument, the homesteader said, ranchers, you should build stronger fences to keep your cattle in. The argument there about fencing. Often it led to violence. The worst example was the Johnson County War, War of 1892. I'll look at that in a later video. Fences, wood, that's what we're thinking. But then along comes a man called Joseph Glidden, 1874. He patents, develops, invents, if you like, barbed wire. As a result, he became very rich. It's easier to fence with barbed wire, but it, again, it causes more conflict because the ranchers didn't want barbed wire. It would damage the cattle. So cowboys were sent out to cut the wire, but the homesteaders didn't want that. So then that led to yet more conflict. The final bit of conflict, ladies and gentlemen, not between the cattlemen and the homesteaders. This one was between the cattlemen and the sheep farmers. You must be joking. <laughs> no, I'm not joking. The cattlemen were very annoyed because they said, look, these sheep, they eat the grass right down to the roots. So there's not enough left for our cattle. Also, the sheep carried a disease, sheep scab, and they didn't want it to spread to their cattle. They didn't want to lose the money. States such as Texas, Wyoming. Again, there's conflict here between the cattlemen, cowboys, and the sheep farmers. And again, conflict led to deaths in several deaths in the 1870s. I'll finish with yet another of my terrible jokes. What do you get if you cross an angry sheep with a moody cow? Angry sheep, moody cow. What do you get? Well, ladies and gentlemen, you get an animal that's in a bad mood. That's my last joke. I apologize. So there we have it. Hopefully it's been useful. We've looked at the life of the cowboy, the clothes of the cowboy, the job of the cowboy on the long drive and on the range. And then we've looked at the conflict, the reasons for the conflict between the cattlemen and the homesteaders. So I hope it's been useful. Our next video, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to turn away from cattlemen and homesteaders, etc. We're going to start looking at the impact of all these changes and developments that we've seen in the last few videos on the Plains Indians, the Native Americans. What was happening in their lives? That's coming next. As ever, I hope it's been useful. All the best now. See you soon.